first question that we're going to take on is, how can medical professionals and patients contribute to better EU legislation for social protection for cancer patients in the areas of employment and access to financial services, uh, such as insurance, and what is the impact of a global financial crisis that we're facing on the health sector? And Cora, I'm going to start with you. Give your title. I'm hoping that what you can do is explain to us the major issues facing cancer survivors, which have to be addressed if we're going to improve quality of life. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation uh, to join you in this meeting and uh, having the opportunity to uh, to share the um, the outcomes and the issues uh, we have met in uh, the uh, meeting in the EU Parliament two weeks ago. Um, as you are all aware, um, a substantial number of uh, cancer patients and survivors experience problems at their workplace, although they are willing to return to work. Problems as um, colleagues um, who have overtaken their work during their absence, prejudices of employers, employees, and managers, colleagues, uh, because they think of uh, the risk of recurrence and that uh, afflicts their behavior, physical and or mentally, uh, perhaps patients were not capable of uh, doing their work due to cancer is one of the ideas. And some are thinking that um, cancer patients are less reliable employees. Um, therefore, their options for returning to full-time or part-time employment are often limited or denied, and that leads to financial decline in the family, risk of being pushed aside from the labor market, especially in this um, period of financial crisis that's uh, a real threat, and uh, for patients um, themselves, diminished feelings of self-worth. To diminish these problems, um, first of all, we think that it's necessary that patients are better informed about their rights. But on the other hand, colleagues, managers, employers uh, have to be informed as well, better informed, because they have to get a more realistic uh, view of the capacities of cancer patients. And last but not least, a legislation, better le le legislation that gives cancer patients and survivors social protection as employees. During the continuing cancer care conference um, that was organized by the ECL at the EU Parliament on the 7th and 8th of September, and which was hosted by uh, the MEP Liz Lin, we wanted to um, get this topic on the agenda of the EU Parliament, creating awareness, but we do not only want to create awareness, we wanted to call the MPs to action with our declaration of support for cancer patients. In our call to action to the MEPs, we asked to work to extend anti-discrimination legislation to people with an increased risk, such as cancer patients. And in the declaration we stated that we call for, at a minimum, a definition of disability as set out by the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities to be impl implemented in all member states and applied to all existing and proposed EU anti-discrimination legislation. During the meeting, already nine MEPs signed the declaration and we are now talking with the office of Liz Lin to look what next steps has to be take, have to be taken. And um, my question to this audience is, in which, which way could we collaborate with each other to um, enhance and accelerate the uh, legislation um, when it comes to work and cancer patients. Before we go to a more group discussion, I want to go to Stella for a moment. 
and the perspective, obviously there's a political issue at hand here. So if you could please address the political issue and also the impact of the current financial crisis on cancer survivorship. I think that there's a major, major issue uh, at the moment that uh, touches on the aspects that have to do with survivorship because we're now facing uh, very many different realities uh, at the European level. Uh, the global financial crisis has impacted in every way of life. Uh, in fact, to increase what we're looking at and have seen in the past is health inequalities, not only across EU member states, but within mem EU member states. We all know that uh, health is uh, uh, determined by very many variables, and the new concept that the EU Commission is looking uh, at, in fact, is this uh, social aspect of health where everything to do with uh, the environment that a person, an individual lives in, actually impacts on their uh, way of life and their disease uh, risks and morbidity. And of course, cancer patients are greatly affected by what is happening in, in Europe at the moment in the uh, economic sector because it is serving to um, increase the disparities that we see uh, between countries and within countries in the way that long-term survivors are treated. Having said that, I, uh, as a patient advocate, think that we are in an extremely fortunate position to be actually talking about survivorship. I think that it is important that we are able to be worried about these issues that we have, to be concerned about uh, cancer patients going back to work, living for many, many years after their disease experience. And I think that this is the positive aspect of where we are moving in terms of treatments uh, for cancer. But because this is a very new area and there are different issues coming up all the time that have to do with insurance, that have to do with access to medicines, that have to do with palliation, that have to do with their rights and the way that they're seen, I firmly believe that this is our role as patient advocates to help legislators and to help those who are going to make these decisions understand what the issues are. And this can only be done if patient advocates are like we are here today sitting around the table and able to share what it does mean in terms of um, the long-term uh, survivorship effects of, uh, of a cancer patient. I think that there's a major issue that we have to integrate the survivorship questions into national cancer plans. I know we're going to be discussing this because I think that then we're going to be able to prioritize, we're going to be able to look at how we're going to use funds, we're going to be able to look at what legislation we need in order to be able to uh, safeguard the uh, patients that uh, uh, are living for many years after their cancer experience. I do not think that Europe, the European Union has all the answers yet, but I think that that is what we're there for in order to help um, move in towards legislation that will protect patients. We feel that uh, uh, the social problems for cancer survivors is a crucial uh, question. And uh, we feel that uh, uh, we should push on this uh, at European Parliament. It would be nice also uh, to see uh, how each country up to now uh, uh, did on uh, this uh, field. In Italy, we were able to lobby for this, and uh, we succeeded to get uh, a very, uh, a very excellent legislation. Because since uh, two or three, uh, we uh, succeeded to get uh, a special legislation for cancer patients, giving uh, to them the opportunity to uh, go uh, from uh, uh, the full time to part time uh, as ma as uh, as they desire to uh, once they are over uh, uh, the treatment or while they are in the treatment, but uh, they are in the condition to go back to, uh, to work. And we succeeded to get uh, uh, three years ago another important law that allows uh, to cancer patient uh, relatives uh, to uh, have a priority in going, uh, uh, getting uh, the part time uh, to take care of their relatives. So I think that uh, uh, if we, uh, find out uh, how things have been done, and we were thinking uh, to do this survey in uh, the uh, 
uh, in, we discussed this on our board, and we were trying uh, to look at each legislation of each country and see uh, who, uh, which country did some uh, uh, law on this. That could help uh, to, uh, to have also the uh, uh, European Parliament uh, to uh, uh, get support from the national legislation. So it would be nice if we start uh, doing this and then uh, have all together a position uh, to uh, push the European Parliament to work on this. But if there are already uh, uh, national legislation, this uh, could help a lot. And I'd like to point out that um, in response to some of the questions that Stella raised, um, in the Netherlands there has been a move, especially among the hereditary cancer syndromes, to uh, organize a standard of care that is accepted by the insurance agencies, the psychosocial uh, caregivers, the patient organizations, and the specialists that are involved, so the organizations of the specialists. This is a document that, of course, is quite labor-intensive. However, once this is administered and submitted to the Ministry of Health, the idea is to get a standard, essentially, of how we can approach each of these problems. This will be, of course, relevant for general patients, cancer patients that have individual cancer experiences. And these families, it's very relevant because they have multiple tumor experiences over the course of one lifetime. And oftentimes you have four patients, five patients, 10 patients in one family.